Hey peeps, we are back. We're talking to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, season 12, episode 21, which is the season finale. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. So before we get into the show, now honey, listen, Latoya Jackson has gotten in the mix. Okay, Latoya Jackson went to her Twitter and she said, I've known at Kathy Hilton since grade school and I've never known her to have a temper tantrum and it's simply difficult for me to believe. Sending love to you, Kathy. Honey, now listen, not only did Latoya Jackson find her way in the midst of this, so did Lana Richie's first wife, Brenda, Nicole's mama. She came out and she said she doesn't buy it either. She has known Kathy for too damn long and Kathy is not out here acting like this. So Lisa, listen, nobody's buying it. Then Kathy posted a picture of her reunion look online and none other than the Kris Jenner post all these heart emojis under it. And Kathy replied back with her own praying hands, heart emojis, listen, Chris and Kathy have been friends for years, okay? She's not jealous. She is not jealous of the Kardashians. Now, the reunion looks. I mean, I don't understand why it is that most of the housewives get together and they try to have a cohesive look. These ladies always look as if they're going to a different event. It's always a little off. Um, somebody reached out to Garcelle on social media and said, you know, maybe you guys should start doing what the other housewives do and kind of come together when it comes to your reunion looks. And Garcelle said she absolutely agrees that there should be some sort of cohesion, some sort of theme, because she agrees. They all look like they were going to a different party, a different situation. Now, out of all of these girls' looks, I'm going to say my favorite two looks were Crystal and Kyle. Kyle looked amazing to me. So Crystal and Kyle were my top two. Also, for Lisa Renner to say that Kathy is jealous of the Kardashians, um, it's weird to me because Lisa Renner has always tried to be the Kardashians. You know, the outfit that she wore to the reunion is the same outfit that we've seen Chloe wear. The outfit she wore to Kyle's party, we saw Kim in that outfit. Lisa Renna is doing too much. Either that or her stylist is trying to set her up. I am really sick of this woman, I'm just saying. So can I say, Miss Diana, I couldn't make it to the reunion because, oh my gosh, I'm so sick, I have the C-19. Oh my gosh, why are you without a mask? And why is your makeup artist without a mask if you are sick with C-19? No, ma'am, not buying it. I didn't buy it from the moment that I heard that she couldn't make it to the reunion due to being sick. Full of shit. So Garcelle has this Birkin and Bubbles party, which I thought was really cute, and she looked great. You know, the funny thing is, is just a couple of days before the episode aired, I had a conversation with my mom, and I said, Mom, if money was absolutely no expense, would you spend, you know, $45,000 on a Birkin bag? And she said, absolutely not. And you know what? I agreed with my mom. I can get a bag that looks almost like that for $35 off the Amazon. I'm just saying, you know, it's not the same. I understand. I don't know. I think I would have rather donated $45,000 to St. Jude's or to the Aladdin Striners Hospital versus spending it on a purse. But that's just my opinion. Everybody has the right to spend their money on what they want. That is not my business. I was absolutely excited to see Patrick at Garcelle's house. Now listen, I believe that we should get to see Patrick every season from now on. Patrick is funny. I absolutely adore seeing him. And you know what? I think next season we should see them invite Patrick over. You know what I mean? Invite him over and let somebody wait on him for a change. When Cherie shows up for the party, I laughed a little. I said, why would she be invited to this Birkins and Bubbles party? We saw her sign her name to Crystal's gift and card and then make sure that Crystal knew that the gift came from her and Garcelle so we know she's not buying any Birkins. I'm just saying. 
Io walks into the place with a 60 some thousand dollar Birkin bag. I said, girl, I can get that bag on the Amazon for $35. Well, not exactly that bag, but one that looks just as pretty. I'm just saying, I wouldn't pass it off as a real Birkin or anything. I would tell people this is my Birkin inspired bag from the Amazon, $35, this could be yours too. Anyway, the way she ran in there, jerking up Sutton, talking about get your hands off this bag. I said, girl, if you don't keep your hands off Sutton, I'm tired of you. I was happy to see that Garcelle did buy her own Birkin bag, her very first bag. It was beautiful, it was yellow, and it was $13,999, which was, you know, too much. Anyway, it was very pretty and she enjoyed it. She deserves it and she paid for it with her own money. So I respect that. Patrick and Sutton's personal assistant flirting a little bit, but they have established that they can only be friends. You know, Patrick says he's like a flower, honey. He's just here and there, you know, pollinating, pollinating, but he has not tried to be in a relationship. So uh, sorry to Sutton's assistant. Now here's the thing that I was thinking, Kyle always is willing to go to Garcelle when the chips are down. When they were in Aspen and her and Erica had that falling out and she was upset with Dorit, Kyle went to Garcelle. When they got to that bar, she sat next to Garcelle. She said, can you just sit with me? You know, I'm nervous, I'm upset and all of this stuff. And now she's going to Garcelle. And I said, it's really weird to me that you were always there, always being comforted by Garcelle. But when you are riding high with the main girls, you don't give a damn about Garcelle. You don't pipe up to step up to try to help Garcelle in the middle of any of her issues. But here's Garcelle trying to help you out. She said to my sister, I think you need to get help or something. And I was like, yikes, I don't think. And then Kathy was kind of silent. I was like, oh God, let's just, let's just move on and accept the apology. And yeah, she's your sister. If Kyle wants to sweep it under the rug to keep her family intact, then rent a butt out of it. But she apologized. I was like, okay, I can just move on. And, and I had locked myself in the bedroom. Why? I was shook because of the behavior that was going on. You felt scared enough to lock yeah. yourself in your room? Oh, yes, I did. My sister apologized. I, I have to move on. I understand. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't want to be talking about this no, I can't. either. You know, I hope she gets the help that she needs. Do you know what I mean? I meant that yesterday. I pray for her that she takes it and goes, how can I, how can I learn from this? How can I be better? How can I grow from this? I've never seen a human being behave like that in my life. This really needs to be handled between you and Kathy. You need to Garcelle tells her pretty much, she didn't know what was going on because her and Cherie did not go to the club. They went back to their rental home and went to sleep. So they have no idea what is going on. However, she does let Kyle know up front. This is between you and Kathy. You and Kathy need to work this out and the other girls do not need to be involved. And that's what all of us have been saying. Now, the thing with Renna here for me is that she doesn't know how to stay out of people's business. I think that Renna has played herself. She has gone from her very first season on this show all the way to now, continuing to be in other people's business, doing anything that she thinks she needs to do to hold on to her diamond, to hold on to this paycheck. And people have gotten over it. We are tired of it. You are a one trick pony. It's over for you, Lisa Renna. You are a selfish woman who has done nothing but tear through people's families, lie on people, scream in people's face. You're very dramatic and it's just overly done. It's quite disgusting in my opinion. I mean, we've seen Lisa spend an entire season trying to convince us that Denise Richards is a liar and a cheater. We saw her try to convince us that Lisa Vanderpump was out here selling stories to the tabloids. We saw her try to convince us that Yolanda was faking sick because she has Munchausen's. I mean, listen, we've seen her lie about Sutton not paying for a table after she leached off of Sutton. 
We've seen her try to carry six episodes, arguing with Garcelle over a thank you for that bolognese. I mean, seriously, seriously. She went out on social media and tried to say that Garcelle and Sutton have never had a storyline and they really shouldn't be on the show. Really? Because I, I've never seen a storyline for you either. Not once. I mean, we saw the storyline you tried to create by using your daughter's illness and her eating disorder. We saw that. We also saw you try to create a storyline when you wanted everyone to know, everyone to know that your daughter of the age of 19 or 20 was dating 35-year-old Scott Disick, who is a part of the Kardashian-Jenner clan. We saw you try to make that happen. We weren't interested then and we are not interested now. Please exit to the right, bitch. We are tired. And I'm gonna tell you right now, Garcelle has rose in the ranks for me. You know, she made a comment in an interview earlier at the beginning of the season saying that she thought the fans might get angry with her this season because she, you know, decided to start speaking up and saying things and maybe she might have said something that they don't like and she's hoping that she doesn't get a whole bunch of angry backlash. Let me just tell you something, honey. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I don't think that you said anything this season that I don't agree with. Not one thing. I appreciate the Garcelle and Sutton that showed up for season 12. These two women said, we are sick of the shit. You are not about to harass the hell out of us without us sticking up for ourselves this season. It's not going to happen. Now, Cherie gone somewhere because you brought nothing. They were sitting there having this whole big thing tonight on tonight's episode and you said nothing honey you just sat there even when lisa reno was being real nasty you still sat there kyle is having this charity function in her backyard and i just want to say listen every time kyle has something at her house it is gorgeous that woman can start renting out her yard for weddings and parties and she would make a killing that place is beautiful i'm just saying it's just a business idea but I know that I would hold a wedding in Kyle's yard. I don't care. Anyway, they were able to get free jewelry. Um, the Grace Kelly Foundation had a jeweler that was a part of the evening and all the ladies, if they wanted to, they could wear jewelry that evening, you know, and return it at the end of the night. That ring that Kyle was wearing, well, both of those rings she was wearing, the one that was 52 carats, oh my God. It was a million dollars. And for some reason, I assumed that that diamond would be a lot more than a million dollars. I could be wrong. I thought it said a million. Anyway, it was absolutely gorgeous. The ladies looked amazing. The production people asked Diana, who showed up looking like Jessica Rabbit. She looked a mess, in my opinion. But, um, and so did Asher. I don't care anything about your ruby red slippers either talking about he's matching Diana. Boy, go on somewhere. Anyway, the production team asked her why she wasn't wearing any of the loaned jewelry. And she pretty much said, um, waving her arms around, um, I've got my own jewelry. I'm rich, bitch. Pretty much. You know, I'm paraphrasing. But she let him know these other ladies are broke compared to me. They need to borrow jewelry. I don't. Uh, Diana is always on my nerves. She really is. Anyway, have you spoken to Kathy? Too bad. She's upset. But honestly, I well, don't your friends don't seem to care about you. Because if they did, they'd let it go. Oh, Kyle. If Erica and Rena really cared for you, they would drop it. And they're not doing that. I'm telling you right now, they to really Yeah, good man. Sleep. I think it's a distract from Erica. If Kathy's apologized, then we should let it go. Why are you saying we should let it go? Who are you talking to? I guess I'm talking to you two. Why do you have an attitude about this? I sense an attitude coming from you, and I'm just like, why? I feel like now we're not talking about Erica anymore. We're talking about Kathy. People in this group have been very hard on me. So Kathy has to own her sh too. You can't just sweep this under the carpet. It can if she wants to do it. I'm not going to take it to my grave because I'd get sick and get cancer. I'll get sick and die because it's that vile. <laughs> Did she really say that? Oh, my God, it's so dramatic. <laughs> Are we on Days of Our Lives again? For a year and a half, I've been f***ing pumped. Okay, so, so that's why you want Kathy to be called out. Yes, it is, actually. Point blank, did either one of you leak information no. to the press? Either one of you leak to the press any of this information about Kathy? 
No, I don't know how to do that. It was someone who works for you. Interesting. The stories were coming up, given to the tabloids at your hair party. Why wasn't it printed if it was a play-by-play? -play? Have you read it in the press? I haven't. I haven't either. You guys are like... <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you defended her right away as opposed to going, do you think somebody in your camp would do that? Why don't you ask her that? I wouldn't even think to ask that because I don't think anybody would do that. I'm sure Kathy has a lot of people that don't like her. It's not about anybody wanting to take Kathy Hilton down. Kathy Hilton will take herself down. We're not here to take anybody down. Well, maybe it's someone saying, let's take the distraction off of Erica. There's no taking distraction off Erica. <laughs> She's not well known enough to take the distraction off Erica right now. This is not a competition, Erica, of who's more famous than who. But if you do want to play that game, I think Kathy's last name trumps Girardi. Okay, so I'm going to be all over the place again because they have wrecked my nerves. Garcelle was speaking all facts, no fiction. When she told Kyle if they were really your true friends, they wouldn't keep prolonging this. This is their agenda. This is what they are doing. They are trying to get us off of Erica's back because we've been on Erica's back for two seasons for this uh, alleged crime that her and her husband have committed. And so now she's trying to get Kathy taken care of, not Kathy down a peg or two, due to the fact that the fans love Kathy. Her and Lisa Renna are not happy with the fact that Kathy has a huge uh, following. Garcelle making the comment, if Kyle wants to sweep things under the rug for the sake of Kathy and her family and keeping them close, that's her right to do that. Lisa just needs to accept that and move the hell on. Stay the hell out of these people's business. You know, what I love about Garcelle is Garcelle, no matter if she's your friend or not, she is going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. She's not about to blow smoke up somebody's ass. And when she delivers you the facts, she does it with compassion. And that's one of the things that I really like about Garcelle. And also, Kyle may have gotten mad at Garcelle when she made that public statement that she thought that she was a little bit closer to Kathy than Kyle is right now. But did you notice that at the Bubbles party and at Kyle's charity event, she was asking Garcelle, have you talked to Kathy? I think that proves that Garcelle is a little closer to Kathy right now. Okay, so Garcelle is asking questions and Lisa Renna out of nowhere wants to know if Garcelle has an attitude. Okay, so you know my head blew off my shoulders, right? I said, oh, okay. <laughs> I've had enough of this shit, okay? I have had enough of these microaggressions. I have had enough of this, so much so that I'm willing to call Lisa Ritta out. Girl, are you a racist? What the hell is this about? All of you ladies go back and forth, back and forth. See you next Tuesday, back and forth, back and forth. You bitch, you this, you tramp, you slept to your well, you this, this, and this. Garcelle sitting here talking calmly and rationally. All of a sudden she has an attitude and she's involved in something that doesn't concern her. Why is that? Why is it that when the black woman says something, she automatically has a damn attitude? And that is why throughout all these seasons that Garcelle has been on this show, she has always pulled back before she actually did get the attitude, before she actually did become aggressive because she didn't want to be labeled as the angry, aggressive black woman. We as black women should be able to express ourselves the same way as any other woman without being labeled as having an attitude and being aggressive. This woman Woman is sitting on the same couches that you and your friends are sitting on. She is speaking in a common, rational voice, and she is talking about a situation that includes all of you, and she all of a sudden has an attitude. Get the fuck out of here, Lisa Renna. You know, it's very interesting. Garcelle talks to Dorit and she says, don't be Kyle, don't be Kyle. Then all of a sudden when Dorit, reflect, when Dorit tells the story, it's don't be Kyle, don't be Kyle. You know, all of a sudden there's this attitude, there's this aggression towards tiny old Dorit. Both of y'all shut the hell up. That's a bunch of bullshit. I, you know what? I can't. It's microaggressions at its finest.
And then Lisa Renna always wants to get out on social media and say, why is it that whenever we get into an argument with Garcelle, you guys want to call us a racist? Because you always want to act like you're frail. You always want to start whining and crying after you've been called on your dirty deeds. Shut the hell up. If you talk to the rest of the girls the same way as you talk to Garcelle, if you call all the rest of the girls aggressive, you never once said that Erica was aggressive. Erica was all down Sutton's throat. Never once was Erica aggressive. Never once did Erica have an attitude. But Garcelle calmly asking you questions and calmly saying, don't be Kyle, she's aggressive and has an attitude. Shut up. You know, when Lisa makes that comment that she locked herself in the bathroom, we were all like Garcelle. Of why? You of all people? Why would you be scared enough to lock yourself in the bathroom? Now, and if Kathy was really tearing down the house, acting a fool, showing her ass, you know good and daggone well, Lisa Renner would have had her iPhone camera up and recording. Even if it wasn't a video, she would have definitely recorded the audio because she wants to have something to say. She didn't record any of that. And I think the reason that none of it was recorded is because if she had recorded anything, she wouldn't have been able to embellish and make it bigger than it is or bigger than it was. Kathy probably did have a meltdown. She probably did say a whole bunch of things that she regrets saying, but I bet you nine times out of 10, she did not say all those things that Lisa Renna is alluding to her saying. Garcelle is being more than a friend to Kyle. She has been a friend to Kyle more than Lisa Renna or Erica or Dorit all of these seasons. Ooh, I agree with Garcelle. Are we on Days of Our Lives again? You know, even Diana laughed. Even Dorit said, oh gosh. You know what my problem here with this is for people who are really suffering from cancer, people who have lost people to cancer, this is a serious thing. And for you to sit there and try to act that if you didn't say something, oh my gosh, I would get cancer and die. You know what? Shut the hell up. You are so disrespectful on so many levels. There are so many people that are struggling with cancer right now. Girl, just shut the hell up. I do appreciate how Garcelle handled the whole thing when Lisa called her out for having attitude. She just turned her head and smiled because that is something that women of color, we have had to go through this our entire lives of people stating that we are being rude or aggressive, snarky, we have attitudes, we're taking jabs at them because we are showing emotion. But everybody else get to show their emotion and it's fine. I mean, really? Erica at the table <laughs> talking about, they're coming for me. Girl, you are damn right. You are damn right and they should. They should, they should be coming for you, Renna and Dorit in my opinion, because Dorit has done nothing. Dorit has done nothing. I hope she's gone next season as well, because what did Dorit bring? Absolutely nothing to this season, except for her beautiful children. I will give you that. I love her scenes with her kids. And I would like to know, did Lisa, Erica, and Dorit think that Kyle was angry and had an attitude when she got in Dorit's face and told her to F off? i just like to know, was that an attitude? So somewhere in there, Dorit told Kyle that she shouldn't have brought this up. What was that about? Why not? You guys bring up everything else. Why couldn't she call them out? Is Dorit trying to cover for Erica and Lisa? Now, one thing that I absolutely loved is when Kyle said that somebody has been going to the press leaking everything, I instantly knew who it was. I said, oh gosh, you know that it's Erica and Lisa. Lisa's absolutely leaking information. The fact that on the ride over to the place, when they were in the car and Lisa kept bringing up her publicist and oh, everything's out there now, everything's out there now. And oh my gosh, Kathy's trying to silence me. I said, uh-huh, both of you have orchestrated this beautifully beautifully the same way you orchestrated the whole puppy gate situation with teddy john mellencamp's daughter and lisa vanderpump when you kept trying to make it seem as if lisa had the stuff out to the blogs it was lisa renna 
in my opinion. Sutton was here for Kyle. She said, oh Lord, no ma'am. She ran right up to Erica and Lisa and she said, are you guys giving information to the blogs? I said, all right, Sutton. Okay, Sutton said, I'm here for the questions. If Kyle's not gonna ask, I will. But when Kyle dropped the bomb that it was Erica's team, Erica's public who was dropping all this information, oh, I loved it. And right then is when Erica and Lisa just started fumbling a little bit. And not only that, that's when they looked at each other and said, oh shoot, we got to come up with something we need to deflect, deflect, and they tried it. The comment of Erica saying that Kathy Hilton's name is not going to stop people from talking about her. I agree a thousand percent with Kyle when she said Kathy's last name trumps Girardi. It really does. Erica, nobody knew who the hell you were until you joined this show. And nobody really knew who Tom was except for the fact that he was the Aaron Brockovich attorney. If we would have saw Tom on the streets, we would have never recognized you or Tom. And as a matter of fact, we still don't give a damn about you or Tom. We care about the victims and the victims being able to recoup their money. That's what we care about. However, people have known about the Hiltons for a hundred years. Ma'am, keep it moving. It's just funny to me, you know, Kyle is always with the group when they're talking shit about Sutton. But here it is, Sutton's trying to help you out, trying to get to the questions. Her and Garcelle was helping you out all night. Erica making that comment that Kathy made an ass out of herself in public. Ma'am. <laughs> Ma'am. Ma'am. You are the queen of making an ass out of yourself. Sit down. As a matter of fact, you and your dress, get the hell out of Kyle's house. I would have put her out. I would have put her out. Hey, listen, they ran the hell up out of there, didn't they? When they realized that nobody was falling for the shits, and I appreciate Garcelle calling Lisa Renna out. She said, you didn't even ask Erica, would somebody from her team do something like this? You just automatically jumped on Erica's bandwagon. Oh, she wouldn't do something like this. Oh no, oh no. Come the hell on. Seriously? And Dorit made some kind of comment about how she stands on an island. That's a damn lie. That is a damn lie. You don't stand on an island by yourself. You stand on the fence. And you know what you do? You hover over. This side maybe, this side maybe. You have never stood alone. Not one damn time. And that makes you a shitty friend, in my opinion. I don't know, you guys. I believe that Erica and Lisa have been dropping information for season after season. I don't care what Erica says about how she wouldn't know how to do that. That's a lie. I think that Lisa and Erica said, listen, we tried it with Sutton. The fans still like her. We tried it with Garcelle. The fans still like her. She hasn't quit. She's not going to quit. We can't get rid of her the way we got rid of Denise the way we got rid of LVP, the way we irritated the shit out of Yolanda. I'm not sure if Yolanda left because of them or because of her illness and her divorce. I'm not really sure. We just can't get rid of them. So listen, the fans like Kathy and we already have another rich woman, Diana, and she's evil like us. The fans can't stand her the same way they can't stand us. And um, let's just go after Kathy. That's how, that's what I think. I think that it was very planned. I think that it was strategic for them to bring Diana on here, have Diana go straight for sudden from the jump. Then tag team with Garcelle. When that didn't work out, they said, damn it, we got to come up with another plan. Let's go after another one of Kyle's sisters. Anyway, you guys get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.